everybody, this is Jim Buck with Black Shoes Campers in Southern California out of the City of Industry. And today, I'm gonna to talk to you and we're gonna go over how to set up the Annex on a classic double. Now, the same setup can go for the Dominator and the Patron, and there's similarities for how it sets up in relation to the Sergeant and the Alpha as well. So let's get into this, let's get going, let's put it together. So one of the first things that we want to do is we want to find out what our diagram is and what poles are going to go where. So we open up the container. Now, not all of them are in the same place, but on this unit, it's on the front door, kind of like with our Dominator and our Patron, they are on the front door. Um, and our Alpha no Sergeant, they're in one of the small compartment doors. So we're going to look at this. Now, there's two different colors of pipes. So if you want to squeeze in here real quick and look, the black is going to indicate the poles that are already mounted inside the trailer all of the red ones are indicating all of the poles that are for the exterior portions. So these are for the windows, for the awnings, and this is gonna be for the front awning area. And so we're gonna use this to create our awning, and then later on, we're gonna build the walls and enclose this entire thing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look, and if you come up over here, as to the compartment. Now in this part, we've already taken out the poles, we've already laid them out, but usually in this unit, there's two drawers here, and that's where the bag of poles goes. So what we like to do is we've already taken them out, and we've already sectioned them out by way of number, one through 14, I believe it is. Now all of the numbers that come with this unit may not be the same size poles, lengths, stuff like that, that you find on another unit. So what we're gonna do is make sure you're paying attention. Don't go off of the numbers I'm using here, go off the numbers that you can find on your guides. Okay, now there's several different ways that we've put these trailers together, put these tents together. And so this is the way that I found that really kind of works the best. And so what I like to try to do, I like to try to protect the material as much as I can. So one of the things that I do is I like to utilize the floor of the, what's gonna create the room. So I'll actually take out the whole flooring because it's used to being walked on and I'll lay that out. That way if there's dirt, if there's mud, whatever it may be, it's already protected. So that way when I take out the section that's gonna make the awning or your roof, because it's not typically getting walked on, this way then what I'll do is I'll lay it out. So this way everything is trying is we're semi protected or at least as best as we can. So I lay it out, I get it stretched out, and then eventually what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be zipping and Velcroing this part to the top up here once we get everything deployed out. So one of the things that you have to do to create this awning is you have to build the metal structure so that way you have the house. So one of the special poles we have is this is our number one pole, it's an extension pole. And so it's got a hook on the end of it. And on the other end, it's got a flat single pole piece that a pin will slide through. And that's on the other end for the leg. So as you look over here, this is part of the framing for the tent itself. And I'm gonna push this tent out and you can look, if you can kind of see, there's an eye bolt here. I'll turn it there so you can see it. So there's an eye bolt. So essentially what's gonna happen is you see a little sock right here, and the sock is an opening on the outside. The curved part is gonna come through the opening, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook it. Here, I'll even hook it on this side so you can see it. You're gonna hook it into the eye bolt. So the pole will be coming through the hole. This is gonna connect in, and then this is how you're going to build the structure that everything is going to be attaching to. So in order to give myself a little bit of height, I'm actually standing on the step of the trailer right itself. Um, so if you need more height, this obviously it's perfectly fine to do that. You can kneel inside, you can stand on the step, whatever you need to do. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, there's a little sock right here and I kinda, you kinda push the eye bolt out so that way I can access it very easily. I can connect it in and then I'm gonna pull the sock over it, this little sock here, and I'm gonna cinch this. Now, the reason why that's important is because when you leave this hanging, what happens is the hook can pop out, which is very bad. You don't want to pop it out and hit anybody. Now, another thing that you can do is if you actually flip it over. So then the hook is coming from the bottom and hooked instead of from the top and hooked. Um, but this way, it's all done correctly. So here's your, your wing nut so you can loosen a little bit, okay? Again, make sure it's, it's nice and easy and accessible. 
so that way you can loosen things because you are going to be extending out quite a bit with it. Now, one of the things you can do from this point on is you can go ahead and connect all the other poles just like this one. That way you're ready to go. Okay, so now that we have all of the poles put in place, I got one, two, three, four, five poles put in place. So now what we need to do is we need to attach our roof. Now, like all of our roofs, they have a heavy duty zipper and this nice thick Velcro. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here. Now I gotta get up just a little bit higher on it. So again, we have our step stool that comes with the unit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, pull myself some slack, get up in here, and then I'm gonna attach my zipper. Now this part can be a little difficult, but it can be done. Now obviously it can be done a little bit easier if you have more help, but you can do it by yourself if you have to. So now that we have it started, all it's simply you have to do is just kind of feed it and pull. Now once you've gone a little bit, it sometimes can be helpful if you take the top edge and fold it down to help hold the rest of it in place. Now you're just gonna go all the way across. Now you do run into some height differences over here. Now again, you can get back into the tent trailer if you want and reach out and pull it through or I have a little trick that I also do. So here's one of the little tips, one of the little things that I do when the zipper gets up towards the top half, if I don't wanna climb inside of the tent trailer. I grab one of the extra poles that has a hook on it. And then all I do is I very simply, now you can do it with a step stool. Um, I like to just do it this way if I can. I come in here, I hook it. I usually go from underneath, I'll hook it. And then what I'll do is as I kind of walk along, I'll lift up my tent part and just kind of pull it. And what I'll do is I'll zip it all the way across as we go across. All right, so now that I have the zipper all over the end, again, we need to bring down our flap so that way we can make sure we're sealing our Velcro. So another thing I'll do is I'll take the same pole and I'll just kind of gently push down all the Velcro. All the high up area stuff that's not the easiest to grab. So I just kind of smooth it all down, make sure it's all stuck. And the nice part is too, is I have a hook. If it's something's flipped up, I can grab it and pull it down. But otherwise, we're just smoothing down the Velcro so that way we have a nice clean seal. That way we're not getting any rain, dust, dirt inside our living space when we out in the out back or out camping, out in the nature, out in the forest, out in the desert, wherever your adventure takes you. Okay, so now that we have the entire top zippered on and Velcroed down, what we need to do is we need to raise up one part. Now, I found that the best and most important part to raise up is the very center one. Don't worry about the other poles, worry about the very center one first. So the center pole for this unit is the number five pole. It's a nice tall pole. And I'm not gonna run it up all the way tall, but I am gonna run it out so that way we have some room. As you can kind of see, the entire roof is back against the unit, so you can't see what's going on. So we're gonna create some space for ourselves. So we'll get inside and you can see what it looks like. Okay, so now we're inside and we usually have a push up against us. We have our pole that we connected. Now I already went ahead and I loosened the wing nut and I made sure that I rotated it. Remember, you wanna have the wing nuts pointing down so you can access them. Otherwise, it's pushing up in the tent. You don't want to be doing that. You can't access it very well. So I have this. I'm going to loosen a little bit so it'll slide. And then I'm going to take the pin. And if you remember earlier, the pin hole that's on this pole. So I'm going to run it in here. All right, so that way it's in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to loosen the leg or the wing nut on this one. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to very easily walk this out to the hole that this will go in and I'm gonna push it up a little bit. Now I don't wanna stand it upright because if I stand it upright, it has a tendency to maybe wanna fall over or go other places. So what I tend to do is I'll set my wing nut and I'll leave it kinda at a little jaunty angle so that way it's not gonna go anywhere. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the poles that cover all the other holes and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So now that we have all of the poles put in place, essentially we've lifted up the roof. So I want to show you just how I have it set. Again, this is, of all the times I've set it up, 
this is the way that it works the best that I've come to use, okay? So if you kind of come at an angle here and you look, I have the poles at an angle. You don't want it to stand straight up, otherwise it will tilt over. Now the end poles as well, not only are they at an angle, I also took the end and tilted it in so it's pushing outwards, because otherwise, if you stand it up like this, it's gonna fall in. So if you put it at an angle, it's kind of pushing out, helps to hold it up, okay? Now, what I like to do next, if you come inside with me, what we're gonna be doing is all of the support poles have Velcro straps that help to hold it in place. So I like to do the back half of the Velcro strap because the front half, you can see a Velcro strap here, you can see a Velcro strap here. Those, there's still some potential for adjustment here, but the back half is not gonna get adjusted. That's gonna stay in place. So what I like to do is I like to come up, I'll get my step stool or I'll stand on my step over here and I'll do all the Velcro, the back Velcro for all of these before continuing on. Okay, so now that I've gotten the back Velcro sections put in place, now I need to put in the crossbars, the supporting crossbars. Now this unit has two sets of crossbars that go across. Now, even though I have everything raised up and I have step stools, I have a little trick that I also use too. Because sometimes if you come in here and you push and push and push, you might knock the pull out, which has happened in the past. So what I'll do is I'll come in at an angle with the clip, it's this rounded clip, I'll come in at an angle with the clip and I roll it on. So that way you're not pushing and knocking things out of place. And again, I'm gonna loosen my wing nut, rotate it so I got my wing nut down or at least facing uh, in a direction I can access it. Because unfortunately the way this one is working. So then I'm gonna extend out. Now this one, this side's a little bit lower so I can reach this and I can clip that right on. And then I can come back and I can tighten the wing nut as best I can. Now, if I need to, again, I can get to my step stool and get up my height. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish off both sections. So when we come back, there's gonna be two rows of support bolts going across. All right, so now that we have all of the cross port supporters out there, now we're gonna go for the flat tip supports. And these are gonna go along the, the point poles. So what we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to lift this up. So I'm gonna do one. Make sure your wing nut is down. You lift it up, slip it underneath, and put the pin back in place. Then you're gonna come over and do the other side. So you're gonna slide across. You're gonna come up, put the pin in, and put the, pin, the, uh, the ring back on the tent. Then we're gonna do this all the way across. So we have these little caps and the caps will actually go over the pin and push down tight. Now it does one of two things. One, if it starts raining, what happens is the water will come down and the cap will actually divert it. Now the tautness of the cap will also keep the tent from creeping up on you. So that way when you're pushing up to put the poles on, it'll stay in place. So now that we've gotten all of our extension poles up, all of our support poles, we still do have two remaining poles that we're gonna to need to put on the ends in the middle, but I'll get to those at last. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get up and all of the poles that we left loose earlier, now we're gonna stretch them all out. What I like to do is I like to come to the top one, top middle, where the whole thing started, and then I will loosen the wing net if it's tight, which it's not, and I'm gonna go ahead and extend this out and tighten everything up. Once I've tightened this up, since I'm already here, I can attach my Velcro, the Velcro that we left off earlier. Now, once we've done this, once we get our Velcro on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend out all of the other poles, and then I'm gonna extend out all of our side support poles. All right, so now that we've gotten all of our extension poles extended out, tightened in place, we have all of our Velcro places in peace, holding the pipes down. Now it's time to raise the roof. Woo -hoo! So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. Now keep in mind, we had this snug down so that way it's not going anywhere, it's not dropping on us. So we're gonna grab the wing net and we're gonna extend up. Now we don't wanna extend too high, but we wanna get it to where this is just about level. So you're gonna raise it up to where about where you think it needs to be. You're gonna tighten your wing nut. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make all of your adjustments to all the other poles as you go along. So that way everything is pretty much even because later on when you put the room together, you want everything to be at an equal height. 
So one of the first things that we have to do is we have to make sure that our top piece here that's connected to our trailer is exposed because on the underneath side is that nice wide strip of Velcro. And what's gonna be happening is the curtain or the skirt is gonna be attaching to that piece of Velcro. Now, if you're looking, if you look very closely right here, you'll actually see a zipper that runs the entire length of the section. Now, the reason why nothing is attached to it is because we have it rolled up. So we already have, or we've had, this entire wall open up during all of our processes. So eventually, if you weren't doing camping and setting up all of the rooms, this would be rolled down and zippered in place. But because we're gonna open up this entire living area, that's why nothing's connected. Now, where I like to start with the skirt is the kitchen. This is our pull-out kitchen. Let me show you real quick. So this is the pull-out kitchen on the classic double. And so what I wanna do, because with the Velcro, there's also zippers. There's a zipper here and a zipper here, and that is gonna be what's gonna expose your cooking area. So you wanna make sure that you have everything in the right place, you're not covering up your cooking area. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Velcro and I'm just gonna start attaching. So I'm just gonna attach and attach and attach, and then I'm gonna do this all the way down that way and all the way down this way, and then we'll be done with that. So we've gotten the majority of the tent trailer done here. You can see we have the skirt running all along, but I've run into a little bit of a problem, but it's not a problem because that's the way it's designed. The door right here is actually kind of blocking where we need to go with the skirt. So what you would need to do is you're gonna have to fold up the door, close it up in, run the rest of the skirt, and then put the door back down. So that way, again, we keep our areas closed off from our critters and our elements. All right, so now that we have the skirt put on, we still have the door put up because I didn't want to bring it down yet because now I'm going to get into my next part. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to make sure that the floor is spread out nice and evenly, and that's where we're going to go to, the floor. Now, what I like to do is I like to fold the floor in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, and almost kind of roll it up so we get down into almost like a sausage roll because otherwise what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be Velcroing the edge of the floor to the edge of the skirt right here. And so it's gonna run the entire length. So the issue I don't wanna run into is if I'm kneeling on the floor and I'm trying to pull that extra little inch that I needed, it's not gonna come out very evenly. So by rolling it up or folding it up and then rolling it up a little bit, now I have the availability to put it all in as nice and evenly and tight as I wanna put it. All right, so usually what I like to do when I put it in the floor, I start at one corner and I'm gonna work my way all the way across. And so you look for like the little pocket because in the corner, it does have a little pocket here. And so you just grab your edges and you push it up against it. Now what you can do too, is once you have your Velcro, you just kind of pinch it together and you go the entire length, again, all the way down to the end. So now that we've got the Velcro strip attached all the way down, now what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and unroll and unfold all of the, the different folds I did to the floor. Now keep in mind, as you are opening it, the poles that you have in place need to kind of move a little bit. So that way you have space to roll out your floor. And what's gonna happen is the poles will end up inside the floor because they don't wanna be on the outside. So once you have the floor spread out and put in place, and you can see I've placed the poles on the floor a little bit, okay? What you wanna do too is you wanna make sure that when you are doing that, don't pull on the floor too much. Otherwise, you end up pulling the skirt out a little bit. Easy enough, you just kinda of go and just give it a little push with your foot, push it back in, um, but don't push it too far either because you don't want it to be underneath the trailer. So once you got that done, you can come back over here, you can open up your door, put this down, put this in the comfortable position so the, the steps are flat for you. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to put up our walls. So again, you can start on either side, it doesn't matter. I like to start on a side though. Get one side up, it's gonna go in the same way we attached our awning with zippers and Velcro. So we'll get into this, I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side. So now that I have the correct wall piece that we need to have in place, again, we're gonna be using zippers and Velcro to attach it. So there's already Velcro to the top right here. So you could even kind of attach some of the Velcro to kind of help you out if you wish. But again, 
The weight of it is probably going to pull it off, so it's not going to be too terribly helpful. But it's better than nothing. So then you get your zipper. You come in here. You attach it in. Ah, make sure you have the alignment done right, though. Otherwise, you run into issues. So watch. I'll just do it this way. You put your zipper on. Get it pulled in all the way. And remember, this part is going to be on the outside of the poles. You got Velcro helping you with sticking it there in place. And then we're going to zip it all the way down. Now, as you're going along, you can also help smooth the Velcro as you're going along. Now, as you also notice, as I come up to the rubber bands that help to hold this awning on top, they can stay in place as well. Some of the tent trailers, uh, like the Alpha and the Sergeant, you have to take these off because of the way they're mounted. So you finish zipping it up the rest of the way, smoothing down your Velcro as you go, get it to the end, and then you have your end flaps. And so the end flaps have Velcro as well. And so you just attach your Velcro all the way down to the floor. So on the base of this wall, you'll notice there's another PVC rubber flap. And then at the top of that, we have some Velcro. So what that is for is you tuck that underneath the floor. So kind of help give you a little bit more protection. And then again, Velcro on the floor. So you're going to Velcro this all the way down. So now that we got the one side wall put up, now I'm gonna do the whole front section. Now, since you already saw me hook up a zipper on that end, I've already pre-started this one and I've moved a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this along the exact same way I did the side wall and then we're gonna smooth down the Velcro all at the same time. So as you're zipping along, again, you're coming back down to our hold down straps. So, but again, you can see there's still gonna be, the zipper's still underneath it. So if you need to, you can take these off to make it a little bit easier to get past you this way, or you can leave it in place and then just use this strap to kind of pull it through. But we're gonna go ahead and finish off. We're almost here to the end. And then once we get to the end, then we're gonna take this Velcro and attach it with this Velcro and then use these, these Velcro strips to attach to this pole. Okay, so we got the other two walls up. We lightly attached all of the Velcro strips around the poles. So now I'm on the last section here, the third wall, which is go ahead and it's gonna enclose us. And then we're gonna go to attaching the floor as well. But we wanna make sure we also get all of our Velcro pieces in the corners attached. And that's what's gonna seal everything in when it comes to the wind and the rain and all that elements that are out there. So at the bottom of the walls, we have pockets. So these little pockets right here, as you can see. And so the pole is gonna go into the pocket. Now we've already gone through, we've already attached the floor to our wall on this side. We've already attached the floor all the way around. Now, unfortunately, because of we still have to make some adjustments raising up, we have a bunch of bunched up material. So what we want to do, if we make our adjustments now, we're going to lift everything off the floor. We don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shorten up this leg a little bit so I can fit the pole into the pocket. That way, when I make my adjustments and raising up the poles and stretching out so that way everything would be taut, that way we're not going to put, pick it up off the floor and everything's going to be sturdy in place. So now that we have all of the parts opened up, we have it all stretched out, we all have it tightened, we got Velcro done on the floor, on the sides, on the walls, around the poles, we have all of our poles extended and adjusted. Look at the space in this living area. The classic double is by far the biggest tent trailer we have that anybody has, and the amount of living space is incredible just from inside the trailer to the living space that you create by enclosing the annex. Not just utilizing the awning, which is great if you're just gonna be out there for a couple days, but if you have that extended family camping trip, what a great way to be camping. You got the two big beds, queen beds inside. You got a third queen bed you can make with the padding, but you got tons of space to sleep the kids and the family 
in this living area within this annex. So there we have, as you can see, the outside, the very large annex that makes up for the classic double. Now again, keep in mind, this is what the annex is gonna look like for pretty much all of our tent trailers. Our patron, our dominator, definitely our classic double, as well as our sergeant and our alpha models. Now one last thing to mention that we need to make sure you guys are gonna do, so that way we're not blowing away our annex, you need to make sure you use your tent stakes and your guidelines so that way everything gets held down securely. We've had these tents out in some really strong winds, at least about 50 mile an hour gusts, and they all held strong. It was really great to see. So one last thing to look at, look at the massive windows on this unit. Let's come around this way. You got these huge, huge windows that you can see. So when you're out there in nature, when you're out there finding your adventure, you have all of these beautiful, nice wide open windows with screens and even clear uh, uh, patches so you can see through and see all of nature and everything that's going on around you. But again, great unit. You have a great living area and you're gonna have a great time. That's why we like to make sure that you guys are gonna reimagine where you're gonna go, reimagine your destination, finding your adventure. Again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper, Southern California in the city of industry with another part of our series for setting up our tent trailers. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. How you doing, everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper, saying we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.